Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere! Beast! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube Famous Now! Available in 2021, the album, Dad AF! <clears throat> Rock on! <laughs> Gold dust! Woman! <laughs> what is going on with my voice today? <laughs> ah, they're asking me to sing <laughs> in Times Square for New Year's Eve. How are you guys doing today? Happy Wednesday. It's almost Christmas. Can you believe it? And let me tell you, I woke up to the most amazing Christmas present in the entire world today. Um, we're gonna talk about, uh, of course, Trish Paytas and Ethan Klein again, why wouldn't we? Um, it's, well, really the only drama that's going on right now. No, that's not true, that's not true. But I am gonna talk about them in this video today because uh, Trisha is trolling again and I wanna talk about uh, what has happened with Ethan Klein's strike and ban on YouTube. But before I do, um, do you remember me talking about Miss Bluebird yesterday in my video, <laughs> Glamour Shots? Well, I want to thank Miss Bluebird um, for the nicest Christmas present when I woke up this morning. Um, so, Miss Bluebird and another uh, apparently huge fan of mine that said they used to watch all my videos, but they don't anymore. <laughs> okay, they just come to my uh, Twitter to call me sleazy and like the Inquirer and on and on and on. Um, so, Miss Bluebird and this other person have this conversation back and forth underneath. I, apparently, I can't even post um, the links to my videos anymore, okay? But they have this long back and forth where uh, Miss Bluebird accused me of victimizing myself and crying my eyes out in the video yesterday and all this kind of stuff. And, and basically said they didn't even watch the video, but they knew because all these people were coming over and, and apparently to say things to her. I don't know. And then said that 90% of the comments on my video were informing me, oh, Peter, 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 what you don't get is wrong. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just briefly discuss this, all right? Yesterday, I did this video, okay, or the day before, I don't know, I've made so many of these videos now. I think it was two days ago, and I, it was two days ago, and I said, um, the video was called Ethan Klein Banned from YouTube, okay? And if you go to Ethan Klein's tweet, of which I put right here below, and I circled the word banned in it, okay? Because I'm very confused about this. And I said, he literally said it in his tweet, LOL. I'm confused why this is even a discussion. He said it. Proof. And in Ethan Klein's tweet, he said, YouTube denied the appeal. Can't upload for a week. That's the way it goes when you dedicate your life to YouTube. Have 10 full-time employees. Uh, owe rent on your studio and um, have tons of paying members. You get banned for an old, you you get banned for an old video uh, that nobody cared about until mass trolls reported it. You get banned. <laughs> Hold on, let's go back to the title of my video. Ethan Klein banned. Ethan Klein said you get banned. He was talking about himself. So Ethan Klein can say it in a tweet, okay? And everybody as assumes and understands that he's not banned forever on YouTube. I'm not stupid, I didn't wake up yesterday, right? But if I use it as a title on a video, that's not okay. So Ethan Klein can say it in a tweet, but I can't. Cause this gal yesterday, like I said, and I, I responded with the tweet and she said, well first she said the drama of it all. And then she said, oh, come on, right? Okay, well now, because I brought attention to it in a video because God forbid, God forbid, okay, I ever defend myself, right? And this is, this is absolute perfect proof of what I was talking about in my video yesterday. So no, I will not be labor at this point in every video that I make going forward. But thank you, Bluebird, for proving my point. And what I said in my video yesterday was that if I ever defend myself, okay, I am the ASS, number one, and number two, okay, that somehow it has been seen that I am the doormat of the drama community and I should never, ever stand up for myself or say anything. And this has kind of been ongoing for a while, right? That uh, people can say whatever they want to say and drama commentary channels can never stand up for themselves, right? Or we're the bad people. So I wake up today, okay, <laughs> to after staying up and watching the Tiger King last night, okay? So don't come for me, okay? I'm ready. I, like Carol Baskin, I think like a tiger. 
So I wake up today to Bluebird and this other gal going back and forth, okay? Basically saying, I don't watch his videos anymore. And this one gal refers to me and says that, um, like, all YouTube channels are like, hold on a second. All YouTube, or all drama commentary channels are sleazy and something like that. I can't even find where it is now. And then I get accused of being, uh, playing the victim, as always. A apparently, I always, on all six channels, play the victim, okay? And then I was crying about it in a video. No, girl, I was calling you out, okay? Because for some reason, you don't understand that, I understand that Ethan Klein wasn't banned forever. I used Ethan Klein's tweet in a drama commentary channel title, and that's not okay, okay. So anyway, these gals still follow me, right? I don't know why. I don't know why you want to follow someone that you don't like and you don't watch any of their videos and all that kind of stuff, okay? But they still follow me, so thank you for participating in my Twitter. <laughs> I appreciate it, okay? I can't block people. I really, I can't. I, you know, it's just like, I feel so bad. Like, I go to their thing and I go to try to block them and then I'm like, I just, I don't know how Jeffree Star does it. I really don't. I mean, like, he must not... I just feel bad because this is what I know, right? Because now these gals have gone back like 20 different times on my Twitter talking about me making this video and, and all this kind of stuff and, and all these things that they believe to be true that they don't even know. And I feel kind of bad for them. I really do. And I'll tell you why. Because like I make my video and I turn it off and I upload it and then I go have fun with my friends and family. But apparently Bluebird doesn't have a lot of that because Bluebird's just constantly talking about me. So... I don't know, okay? You know, like, um, I feel bad for her. So, Bluebird, I'm not going to block you, okay? I'll, I'll, and, and, and then you can stop crying and victimizing yourself on my Twitter, all right? Anyway. All right, let's get into today's video. Today, I want to talk about Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein. First of all, let's just talk about Ethan Klein and just get that away. Okay, so Ethan Klein, let me pull this up on uh, my receipts, Whitney. So Ethan Klein posted on, where did he put it? Okay, on his Twitter last night, and he posted, just found out YouTube removed the strike. It's too late to do the episode, sadly, especially with the COVID scare, but thank you everyone for caring so much. It makes the whole thing more bearable. Thank you, Team YouTube and my rep, and whoever high is up on the food chain who had some sense. Um, and, okay, so anyway, so he's thanking, you know, YouTube and all these people for removing the strike and blah, 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 whatever, and, um, probably rightfully so, since the video has been up for over a year and people mass reported it, you know, you would think that at, like, in 2021, and this is, we've seen this happen to many, many YouTube creators, I mean, I know that Ethan Klein's fans want to think it only happens to Ethan Klein, but that's not true. It happens to a lot of YouTubers, and it has happened to a lot of YouTubers where they're mass reported. It's happened to a lot of smaller YouTubers who I'm sure don't have representatives at YouTube that they get to talk to or anybody at YouTube that cares about their channel. And it still happens to their channel, and smaller YouTubers, for no reason whatsoever, except for that they don't get along with another creator, have their whole entire channels lost, right? So, I, I'm very thankful that Ethan Klein had somebody that he could talk to at YouTube on speed dial. I don't have that. I think it would be real nice to have that. Um, but anyway, so he got his thing taken down. I think it should have been taken down because I think, it, first of all, it's screwed. But here's the thing. I mean, even if, like, you know, he came out yesterday and he said that they can't film anymore this week because of um, a COVID outbreak, a COVID scare is what he's calling it today, um, at the Teddy Fresh offices of which they share space apparently with or something like that. So he said that they weren't going to be able to, to film for the next week. So I understand that. And he said that the strike has been taken down so they couldn't have done it anyway. I don't know. Maybe assuming that they would have filmed it yesterday or the day before. Um, so I don't know. But... I would be thankful that the strike was being taken down, you know, and I know that people are upset that they don't get to watch the Christmas episode and stuff, and he said he's going to film it, you know, when they come back and all that kind of stuff. So congratulations to you, Ethan Klein, for having your strike taken down, um, rightfully so. I do think it's interesting, though, that YouTube that talks so much about the importance of policies and procedures, um, I mean, you literally have to follow things on YouTube, like, a very specific way. I mean, there's not really a lot on YouTube. Like, I, I hear about this. Like, when you want... Okay, this is what's interesting when you make YouTube videos, and anybody out there that's a YouTuber that's watching this right now, I don't care if you've got... If you're below, let's say... 
four or five hundred thousand subscribers, you probably know what I'm talking about, okay? And you're sitting there and you're watching this and you're like, yep, that's the truth, okay? If you, if you like, try to get in contact with anybody at YouTube, you're doing a, te you're getting a template response, okay? If you ask for help, you're not, I mean, I tweeted out to YouTube creators two weeks ago about something and I said, can, they said, what can we do to help? And it was a template response and I said, let me talk to a human being for once. Oh, actually, you know what I should do is I should go in here and tell you exactly when this was because this is really interesting just to tell you the response rate on YouTube. So I asked YouTube, I said, I'd like to talk to a human being is what I would like to do. And so YouTube responded, hold on a second because I was like, when did I make this tweet? So they responded to me on 1221 at 413 p.m. My initial tweet was 128. <laughs> so two and a half weeks later, I said to them, uh, about what I was asking about. I said, how about you let me talk to a human being about the problem I've had for over two years, right? I tweeted this to them. And guess what? Two weeks later, they respond to me. Two weeks later, okay? But Ethan Klein can pick up a phone and call somebody, a representative at YouTube, and they take down a strike after it's already been appealed and denied by YouTube. So I didn't even know that that was a possibility. Now, now, if that's a possibility for Ethan Klein, is that a possibility for all of the other YouTubers out there? I'm just asking, right? Like, I mean, YouTube is supposed to be a space for anybody to make videos and to interact with an audience and for it to possibly be profitable for them as well, whether you have 100 subscribers, well, you have to have 1,000 subscribers to be part of the partner program. But, you know, like, I think there's this whole idea that, oh, because Ethan Klein has this and he has that and whatever and blah, 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 this is my full-time job. There's a lot of people out there that it's their full-time job and they don't have, where they can pick up the phone and call somebody, you know? And is this me crying a little bit on you on YouTube video? Yeah, this absolutely is. I think it's real unfair. Fair. I think that there needs to be a system for that, right? Where you can apply to have somebody to talk to and all that kind of stuff. And the other thing about it that is confusing to me is, so when you watch these bigger YouTubers like Keemstar, like Ethan Klein and whatever, and they'll talk about something happening to their channel, they always talk about talking to their representative or their manager, right? Or their YouTube manager or whoever. Well, the way that they play it with smaller people is I had a YouTube manager for a six month here, six months there, and then they like whip them away real quick, right? And it's like, and they don't really help with stuff that you would want help with anyway they like want to help you with like how to make your thumbnails look better okay and god knows i already know i need help with that okay or how to read analytics and stuff like that they're not really helping you with real stuff like if i was in a situation like ethan klein what would i do they don't help you with stuff like that right so anyway i think it's very nice that he has somebody that he can reach out to because it's interesting to me that the strike appeal got denied and then YouTube turned around, which meant that YouTube continued to look at the situation and work on it. I think that's very, very nice. I think he should be thankful to YouTube. I think that that's incredible. I wish I had somebody at YouTube that cared a little bit about any one of my six channels. So anyway, I think that's awesome. You know, congratulations. I will say this, you know, that I think it gives us hope for those of us out here that are continuing to work and try to build our channels that maybe one day that, you know, we'll have that as well. I don't know. Ethan Klein's worked very, very hard on his channel over the years and built it to be what it is. So, um, and I respect that. All right, so that's the Ethan Klein thing. Let's talk about Trish Paytas. Trisha Paytas! Trisha Paytas in drama? I can't imagine that. So Trisha Paytas posted this on Twitter last night and said, went vegan but might make room for some sausage on this pizza tonight. Okay. So let me just tell you, first of all, this might be the funniest thread, besides Bluebird and her friend, that I have read... <laughs> I had to. Um, this might be the funniest thread that I have read on Twitter in a really long time, okay? But what I will tell you that I did not need, and I didn't, and I, I feel like I knew this, but had forgotten it selectively, is that Trisha Paytas had done an OnlyFans video with some guy, and there was like pizza involved, and then there was like a hole in the pizza box cut out. So people had gone in and taken like screenshots of Trisha Paytas eating the sausage, so to speak, and posted it in this Twitter thread. I didn't need to see that, okay? I didn't need to see that at all. And, uh, yeah, so, um, so Trisha Paytas posts this. Now, my in um, initial thought was, Trisha Paytas is still a vegan? I didn't think Trisha Paytas was a vegan anymore, number one. Number two, people were saying that Trisha Paytas was eating steak at their wedding, okay? Number three, you know, 
<laughs> well, anyway, I will just, I don't, I, I'm not even have to give my opinion. I'm just going to let the people speak for themselves. Okay, so let me just read you some of the comments. Can you stop, some of them are serious and some of them are just absolutely laugh a riot hilarious, okay? Can you stop using the word vegan and just use plant-based instead? It causes a lot of confusion to non-vegans. I and other vegans would really appreciate it. The last thing the world needs is more confusion. Okay, now, really what I have to tell you is that the majority of the comments are about um, Aaron Carter Moses, <laughs> water, blonde ambition tour, Mr. Paytas. I miss Pac-Man. I am so confused by this hairdo. And I really think, honestly, like this is really what I think because the haircut's not bad, okay? The haircut's not bad at all. I really think that Trisha was like, we're going to color it the worst shade of banana blonde in the entire world. Retro 1990 uh, Backstreet Boys boy band, okay? Because everybody is going to make fun of it and it's going to bring me so much more attention and then everybody's going to be wa wanting to watch um, my videos during the holiday AdSense month season, okay? Although it was like weird. I think Trisha Paytas actually missed a day from posting a video. I'll look in just a second. So... Someone said, Blonde Moses is a vibe. <laughs> and then someone said, Sending you love. I know how it feels to have an idol scrutinized, but maybe we should be our own idols. <laughs> then somebody said, you guys, I mean, these are just, I sat here and read these last night, and I just was like, I, I literally was in tears crying. Someone said, I don't know who needs to say this, but SHI to it. Someone severely butchered his once beautiful hair. When did that happen? Oh, God. It's the style and the color both look so bad. <laughs> and then somebody posted this picture of the two of them. And then someone said, what? D what? <laughs> TF, did Trisha do to Moses? Moses, blink twice if you want us to get out of here. Br there, bro. LMAO. And someone said, somewhere Brad Mondo, the hairstylist that reviews people's hairstyles on YouTube, is screeching, toner! Does no one have toner? And someone said, what happened to his hair? And someone responded and said, Trisha and her sister happened to his hair. Someone said, after the wedding, she completely changes his look. Must really be love. <laughs> Someone said, FS. It's yellow. Should at least got real hairdresser, not nice. Someone said, okay, I can't read that one. Someone said, Moses, blink twice if you need help. Someone said, Moses, looks great. Trisha, are you going... Okay, use the Hackman surname, which is so funny to me that this person complimented Moses on his hair. That it obviously does not look great. And I mean, that, in my opinion, God forbid a commentary channel have an opinion or a clickbait title, right? I'm going to call my ch video today my clickbait title. My clickbait title. Um, but I love that they asked Trisha if, she's, if they're going to use the Hackman surname, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, when Trisha's already come out and said no. So if you're really a Trisha fan, you would know that. I'm not a Trisha fan, and I know that for some reason. I'm, I'm not a Trisha fan, and I know way too many things about Trisha that I should know. Anyway, okay, someone said, God, they so bad. Poor dude, his hair is ruined. Someone said, okay, so you're not vegan. And somebody responded and said, she's talking about dick! <laughs> and then this person says, yeah, but she eats meat and dairy all the time, so she's about 5% vegan. <laughs> and somebody says, plant-based! <laughs> they get real serious about it. <laughs> she had to take at the wedding! <laughs> Somebody goes, it looks horrible. That's all they said. Okay. First, well, we all know you're not vegan when you eat non-vegan things every day. Exactly. Why are we even playing this out? It's so stupid. Maybe you're trying to be, but you aren't. So, secondly, <laughs> what the F is that? Is that... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> secondly, this, this comment from, uh, okay, I won't say who I don't want to call somebody out. This is the best comment on the whole thread. <laughs> secondly, WTF is that? Is that a golden retriever on his head? Oh Lord, I'm fighting for my spot in heaven right now. I'm a bad person. Okay, 
So one sec, clearly you can tell by his regression that Moses is having his life sucked from him by being married to Trisha. Okay. Someone said, this is so effing funny. Somebody else said, shave his head. Shave his head. Someone said, what did you do to him? You're turning him into Sean Vanderwelt. So creepy. Which is kind of what I thought when I originally saw it. I was like, okay, this is kind of giving me Sean Vanderwelt vibes a little bit. Somebody said 5%. And then it goes on and on. And then this is where people are posting the pizza pictures that I don't need to see. <laughs> I definitely don't need to see. Um, someone said, if you're trying to humiliate him so no other woman would ever want him again, let me tell you, it is working. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone said, not even the vegan community cares about your trolling anymore. What are you going to do when you run out of ways to outrage people and hit your final stage of irrelevance? You already used race, religion, mental health. Sexual identity, gender identity, and food. What's left? And then somebody else responded and said, Trish, do you even like Moses? It seems like you're taking the piss out of him on purpose at this point. This look is giving 90s boy band reject. So desperate to have another sniff of fame that he'll do anything. Even let you dress him up like your ex is. You're weird for that, by the way. And that's what somebody else said. Um, so then it goes on and on and on. And there's all the hair. Now, I do want to talk about this. Um, and this is what happens when uh, all of this kind of drama continues to happen between Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas is that things are pulled up from the past and people want to look at them and all this kind of stuff. So Ethan Klein's sister said something to Trisha Paytas like, you know, karma is coming your way or whatever. I talked about that in my video yesterday. Well, on the front of me's room, I thought it was interesting that um, they found over there... Um, this tweet from uh, August, which I actually remember, because this is like a big deal in the drama community channel, uh, drama community, drama channel community. Um, Donna, Ethan's mother, said, can't wait to go to her wedding. Not <laughs> Madonna from B Blonde Ambition Tour. Do you remember that? Truth or Dare? Oh my God, I love that movie back in the day. Not. And then Ethan's sister responded and said, I don't think I was ever going to be invited anyway. So no skin off my nose. And then this person responds underneath her, which I think is interesting, and said, other than being her daughter-in-law's brother, it's a normal guest to invite. And I thought about that for a second, okay? I, in reality. Like, Trisha Paytas didn't have tons of people to their wedding. Like, I, what did I, what did they say, 50, 60? I think Trisha said 60-something, but I, it looked like 100 to me. So if you look at that wedding, if, let's just say if there was 100 people. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comment section below. I have no idea how many people Trisha Paytas had to their wedding. Okay, so please put it in the comment section below. Say, fact, Trisha Paytas had 103 people at their wedding or whatever. Okay? Is it when you have that? I mean, that is not, I mean, my cousin had like 500 people to her wedding. So is that like a huge wedding to invite the sister-in-law I, I don't know if that is normal, if that's a normal on a guest list. I mean, maybe maybe for the royal family, okay, and those sisters that wear their hats and stuff. I love them so much. I can't remember their names. But, you know, is it normal? Like, I don't know that, like, I'm trying to think this through. Okay, so, like, if my friend Tanya was getting married, okay, and it would be her husband's – okay, her – I'm trying to figure this out. Her husband's his sister's sister? Like, no, I don't think that is normal to invite to a wedding. I really don't. I think it would have been normal because Trisha Paytas was doing the Frenemies podcast with Ethan Klein. It would have been normal to invite them. And yes, I think that Ela, as Moses' sister, and Ethan to be invited to the wedding would be normal. And I, but I, all of the extended family as well on that side of the family. I mean, if you're going to have three or four hundred people to a wedding, sure, absolutely, right. But when you're having a smaller wedding, I don't, I don't know that most people do that. I, maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. So anyway, that was from uh, eight fifteen of this year. And then somebody said, um, okay, hold on a second. Um, Oh, the sister responded to this, and this is the reason for it. It says, insider scoop, Moses and I were pretty good friends, pre-crazy lady. So apparently on the 17th of uh, August, uh, Ethan's sister called <laughs> Trisha crazy lady and also said that uh, Moses and her were really pretty close before all this happened. So anyway, the Moses and Trisha drama just continues. <laughs> As does uh, the ladybird over on Twitter. I love you, Bluebird. Don't lose faith in me yet, please. Please, Ladybird, Bluebird, don't lose faith in me yet. 
I swear I won't cry or victimize myself in, in videos. In videos. Videos. Factory. I swear I won't. Well, for those people out there that watch RuPaul's Drag Race, I swear I won't victimize and cry in videos anymore. Well, I can't promise that in my Peter Does Stuff channel or my vlog channel or my Peterisms channel or my booktube channel. But, oh, and I do cry over here sometimes, don't I? I cried the other day on my sobriety birthday. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.